Hello YouTube, uh, welcome to part 4, we're still working on a framework. In this video we're going to finish up what we started in the previous video, which was UI object class. We have just a couple more methods to implement here. Uh, and let's go start, let's, uh, let's get started with the scroll to method. So let's create a public uh, method that's going to return UI object and we're going to name it scroll. <clears throat> and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the locator is um, is an xpath. So we're going to say is xpath, and then if this is an xpath, then we want to say Android driver scroll to. Okay, actually it's up to you which one you use. You can use scroll to. You can use scroll to exact. Um, I will go ahead and use scroll to. Uh, so scroll to and then we're going to take our locator and we're going to parse it because if it's an xpath, um, well basically the value here that we need to pass to the scroll to uh, method is a, is text, okay, the exact string that we want to scroll to. And if we have an xpath, uh, that means there is a bunch of other trash that we don't need, we just need the text, okay. So, um, what we're going to do, we're going to say locator, we're going to try to parse the locator. So we're going to do substring and substring of the locator. That's what we need. So we're going to do index of, and we know if we specify the text in the X path, it's going to look something like this. Equals, okay. So this is the first uh, uh, index that we want. And then the second index is going to be the end of the area where we specify the text. So we know when we end, uh, when we finish specifying a uh, text attribute, it's gonna look like this. Okay, this is gonna be the closing bracket with the closing um, quote. So what's gonna happen here is uh, we're gonna try to get the substring of the locator where we specify the text, and it's going to return us this index and whatever was between this index and this index. So initially, we're going to get a string that's going to kind of look like uh, it's going to look like this. Well, actually, it's going to look like this. Okay, but that's not what we need right now. Uh, we need a string that looks like this. We just need the text. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace, um, replace uh, the first index that we specified with nothing. So we're going to say at text equals and we're going to replace that with nothing. Okay, so now we're going to have something like this when we parse the uh, locator. Uh, actually, one more thing before um, this method can only be used on on text, like I said. So actually, before we do anything, we need to make sure that our locator contains some sort of text attribute, right? So and if it doesn't contain this text attribute, then we're going to throw, uh, let's just throw a runtime exception. And we're going to say scroll to method can only be used with text at attributes. And current locator. Uh, we can specify the locator does not contain any text attributes. Okay. Just to make sure if for any reason we call this method on a locator that does not contain a text attribute, we get some sort of exception and we will know why something failed 
Whereas if we don't include this, we will never know. Well, it's going to be a bit harder to debug if something happened um, when we called this method on a locator that does not have this attribute. So <clears throat> uh, moving on. So let's see. Uh, if it's not an XPath, we're going to do else. And we're going to move on here then. I'm going to say string. Uh, this is going to be our text, okay? And basically, let's say if you want um, if uh, locator contains text contains, okay? Then our text is going to be locator. Uh, also substring and now we need to parse this substring so we're going to do index off uh, text contains dot text contains and we open the uh, parentheses and open the quote and then the second index is going to be locator index off, and this is going to be the closing quote and the closing parenthesis. And then we need to make sure that we replace, uh, make sure we replace this. with nothing again. Okay, so basically in this line we make sure that if we're using method text contains we can handle it. Okay, because next one is going to be else statement. If none of these conditions are met, you know, the only uh, plausible uh, method left is text, right? So <clears throat> using the, the uh, locator by text. So then this is going to look like this. Text equals locator. Well, actually, let's just copy this stuff. And instead of text contains, we're just going to have text. Oops. Okay, <clears throat> and at the end, we're just going to say Android driver scroll to and our text. Okay, and then once we're done with everything, we're just going to return this. Okay, so once we're done with scrolling, we can chain some other method within this class. Okay. Let's see what's next. Next, we need to wait for an element to appear, okay? Because this is a very important method that is going to be used a lot in the framework. So, but before we can <clears throat> do this, we need to implement another class, okay? We need a utility class that's going to keep track of time for us. So, let's go ahead and make a new class. We're going to call it timer, okay? And timer is going to have a variable. It's going to be public long. It's going to be a start stamp. That's what we're going to call it. And nothing is going to be assigned to it by default. Okay. Then we're going to have a uh, public void method <clears throat> that's going to start our timer. And that's going to be uh, start stamp equals to get time stamp method. Okay, uh, get time stamp method is not implemented, so let's go ahead and implement. We're going to do public static. Um, it's going to return a long 
and it's going to be called get timestamp. Okay. The reason it's static is because we may want to use this timer some in you know later in a framework, and get timestamp is just returning the current timestamp. Uh, so this is the why it's static. We don't want to declare a new timer every time we want to get the timestamp. So that's why we're keeping this uh, method static. And basically, we're going to return new date, and we're gonna. Oops. We're gonna import it, and we're gonna get time. Okay, so we're returning new date time. So now, when we start our timer, this is our starting point. This is gonna be assigned as a starting point. And then the next method we're gonna do, which is gonna be public, is gonna return a boolean. And basically, this is going to tell us whether or not our time has expired. Okay. So we're going to pass in <clears throat> uh, the number of seconds that we want to check whether or not this uh, many seconds have passed since we started the timer. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to say int. Um, this is going to be our difference. And the way we're going to calculate our difference is we're going to make sure it's going to be an integer. And we're going to uh, we're going to get a new timestamp. And then we're going to um, subtract start timestamp from this and then we're going to divide all of this by 1000 okay, and we're just going to take this all in parentheses so this is going to be our difference in seconds and then basically we're going to return a boolean uh, between whether the difference is greater than the seconds we specified. So now we can create our UI object uh, method to wait for an element because we can utilize this class. So uh, the way we can utilize this class is let's create a method first and then we'll get to that. So public UI object and then wait, for, I'll just call it wait to appear I can type today um, wait to appear and then it's going to take a variable which is going to be an integer and this is going to be in seconds uh, how many seconds we want to wait for this element to appear okay and what we're going to do we're going to say we want to create a timer from a core call it timer and it's going to be a new timer okay and then we want to make sure we um, start this timer okay so now now that the timer is started we can create logic uh, to check whether the element exists or not so uh, the way we're going to do this we're going to create a while loop and in the while loop we're going to say while timer is not expired okay seconds and we're going to say if uh, exists which is going to check whether the um, locator we specified exists and if it exists we're going to break the loop okay but if it doesn't exist we're going to continue on with this while loop and we're going to continue checking if it exists for this many seconds okay so now we need to create uh, another logic that's going to check if timer uh, expired <clears throat> seconds right and element doesn't exists 
then we need to throw some sort of exception and I like to throw assertion exception here and just say element uh, fail to appear within um, I can't type within this many um, seconds and we can specify the element if you want to, we can say this is the locator that did not appear. <clears throat> and once we're done with this, we're going to return this. Okay. There we go. So that's our wait to appear method. Now let's create our wait to disappear method. Rename it everything is basically going to be the same. The only thing we need to change is if it exists. <clears throat> if it doesn't exist, we're gonna break, but if uh, timer expired and the element is exists at the end, when timer expired and you know, not good, we're gonna also throw an exception that element failed to disappear within this many seconds, okay? So, now we have a scroll method, wait for element to appear, wait for element to disappear. I'm not sure, this, this one is probably not going to be used that much, but this one is going to be used a lot. Well, at least in my framework, it is used a lot. Um, let's see. So we have finished our UI object class. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in the next video, we're going to start working on our ADB class. Okay, this is going to be a very powerful class is going to have a lot of methods uh, where we'll learn a lot of ADB commands. Uh, very useful. Um, this class can be very, very big. I'm probably going to not going to make it so big. I'm just going to include some um, common ADB commands that's going to be very useful in a, a, a pretty much in any framework just to kind of keep it sane. Um, Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and have a good one. Take care.